peace, peace, peace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, it's your boy Vic Slay Hope, and I got another video for y'all. In this video, I am going to be talking about how there is no such thing as gentrification. Um, but before I even get into my video, I'm going to show y'all a video clip of this brother, and then I'm going to get back to the commentary. I'll say something controversial now. I don't believe in gentrification. I don't believe there's a such thing as gentrification. I'm going to tell you why. I feel like we give our properties away. Is there's redevelopment, there's going to always be redevelopment. And he just says something that a lot of people miss. Like, instead of complaining, buy up everything around it and control it. I used to have a meeting every other week, and I see my boy, Mr. Smith, out here. He used to show up to him. Nobody would come to the meetings. One or two people would show up to the meeting, and we're talking about, hey, they're getting ready to change your neighborhood. Hey, you need to buy this property. Hey, this is coming. You guys, the city has to post those notices in some cases, like six, seven, eight months in advance. It don't sneak up on you. It doesn't sneak up on you. But see, when somebody, I be, I don't care. If somebody gets shot by the police, we mad. But see, if I say that out loud, then I'm cooning, right? Right. If I say if I say that, I'm cooning, right? And I'm the one that approved both John Boulevard here in Dallas. So why why can't we put that same energy into owning our own neighborhoods? You can't keep screaming gentrification. When, when Tim's and the Chris's and, and we're coming to you like, hey, they selling properties for $10,000. I don't want to live over there. <laughs> no, well then don't get mad when the other person buys it. They move your out of there. Because that's what's going to happen. So, I got a few points I want to make. But before I get into my points, I'm going to give you some solutions at the end. So bear with me, right? Stay to the end if you want to hear the solutions, right? Because I'm a solution-based kind of individual. But before I get it started... Make sure you like, you comment, you subscribe if you like my content. And share it. You know what I'm saying? It don't, it don't really hurt to do that, right? The first point, giving our property away or not buying them up. Now, I understand sometimes people don't have the information or the means to kind of like achieve certain things, right? But also, a lot of times, people don't want to buy properties in the neighborhoods that they're living. Because they look at them in a certain way. Um, they, they don't want to live there right um they don't appreciate it they don't value it so but then at the same time like he said they complain when somebody else comes in and buys it right another thing is um if you did if you do have property or you or you don't know the means to keeping it that's your responsibility it's your responsibility to figure out how to keep your property or if you want to buy certain things how to you know, do the proper steps to buy certain things. See, because life is about perception, right? It's about how you view the world. Now, you could view the world two ways. You could view the world as a pessimist, that you're poor, that you're destitute, that you can't do no better and make excuses. Or you could view the world as an optimistic person, a person that you're going to figure it out, right? You're going to do whatever it takes you're going to not leave no stone unturned, but you're going to educate yourself and figure out how to keep your property or how to buy or invest in your neighborhood. Which leads me to point number two. Point number two is um, we don't take proactive measures, right? We don't take proactive measures when it comes to our community, right? What do I mean by that? I talk to people sometimes about credit, right? And you, you'll be surprised how many times people wave me off. They don't want to learn about credit. They don't want to deal with credit. Some, a lot of people don't even have bank accounts. You think you're going to be able to buy a property without the bank? You, you get what I'm saying? Like a lot of times nowadays, especially, you're going to need a bank loan. But people don't want to work on their credit. People don't want to work on their credit. Like I worked on my credit and within six months, I had good credit. My credit today is excellent credit. Excellent credit. My, I got a credit line of almost $30,000, right? So you have to take steps. I don't got a property, right? But you have to take proactive measures to get to the point where you could be somebody that owns something. You can't possibly think you're going to be able to get there if you don't have this proactive mindset and, and taking the proper steps. Another thing, like the brother said in the video, we don't go to the meetings. There's community board meetings or there might be some housing meetings. There might be developing meetings. It might be a lot of things going on in our communities, but we don't go to the meetings. So we don't know what they're selling. We don't know what they're planning. We don't know what's going on, right? Another thing is we don't work together. You know, when I was working, I used to work as a salesman in Portchester, 
Port Chester is a town in Westchester County. For the people who might know, this is a New York area, and they got money over there in Westchester County, right? Probably without, you know, I was going to say with the exception of Mount Vernon, but Mount Vernon got, I guess, some real nice areas too, right? <laughs> not not shitting on MTV, you know what I'm saying? But the point I'm trying to make is there is a working together. When I used to work over there, I used to see Mexicans. There were Mexicans over there that used to work together. They will, they will live in one house. They will fix it up. A lot of them had different trades. One person knew how to do the floor. One person knew plumbing. One person knew roofing. They knew whatever. They will buy a house, a cheap house, hook it up, fix it up, live together, and then they'll do the same thing again. They work together, though. A lot of us don't even do that. We, I don't want to live with you. I don't want to do this with you. I don't want to sacrifice this. I don't want to. We so individualistic, which, again, we're not going to really get nowhere as a community if we keep having this individual um, selfish mindset. Point number three, we don't appreciate our neighborhoods, right? We just don't. You know, when, when I was growing up and I didn't have a certain mindset, I didn't appreciate the building that I lived in. So you know what I used to do? I used to spit in the hallways. I used to pee in them. I used to pee in my elevator, spit in my elevator. I used to loiter, I mean litter, all of those things. I didn't have no respect for where I lived. No respect. I didn't value it. And that's just my building. Now, going outside, you know, I'm, I'm vandalizing. I'm doing the same thing. I'm littering all over the place. I'm not throwing stuff in the trash. I'm not, you know, maybe um, volunteering to, to help clean up. I'm not, I don't care about my, I didn't care about my community. So I'm doing all of these things. And not only the, do not do we not value the community and not only do we not value the neighborhood, we don't value the people in the neighborhood. We rob the people in it. We stab them. We, we shoot them. We kill them. We do things to the people in the, like, all of that comes from how we view the world. We don't value our neighborhoods. We don't value the community, right? We don't appreciate it. Crime, which leads to crime, right? When you don't appreciate your community, right? Now we're doing crime in it. Crime lowers. It's one of the things that lowers the property value. Crime. Why do you think the housing, the apartments and stuff is so cheap in places that are crime ridden? Why? Because of the crime. Part of it is part of the crime. Nobody want to live. Nobody want to live in a crime filled area. Which is why, like, to the first point, people don't be trying to buy stuff there. People be trying to leave. But if you're going to have that mindset of leaving, of not contributing, of not doing the best that you can do, if you're not going to take proactive measures to try to own in your community, then you can't complain with somebody else coming there and buy up your neighborhood. You can't. You can't have this pessimist mindset that I'm poor, I'm poor, I can't do it. Because you can do it. You just have to have a different mindset. Like I said in another video, we, we swear that we are poor, but the reality is we have poor spending habits because everybody getting rich of our communities, everybody making money, Dunkin' Donuts, Checkers, McDonald's, Burger King, White Castle, the Chinese store, the Korean beauty supply store, Popeye's, the, the corner stores, everybody making money in the hood. How, how are we so poor? And everybody making money in the hood. How we so poor? Right? Like you 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 take out you you buy a phone on layaway or whatever, right? Over 36 months and you're paying little by little. But then you complain, but you don't even try to figure out how to fix your credit to get a loan so you could do the same thing. So you could own a property and pay it little by little. Or rent it out. Or do certain things. Things could be done. You just got to be proactive and have a different view of the world. Look at the world differently. So back to the we don't appreciate our neighborhoods. Yes, crime. It leads to crime. We vandalize it. We rob the people in it. People don't even have no safety in our neighborhoods. There's no reason why women should be walking in our neighborhoods and they're not safe. No reason. There's no reason why children should be walking in our neighborhood and they're not safe. There's no reason why men should be walking in our neighborhood and they're not safe. 
That says a lot about our community. How is it that the people, the women and the children are not safe in our communities? They got to worry about certain things. Again, because we have the criminal mindset and we love making excuses of why we don't take care of it and why we don't think different things. And I'm going to forever bring these examples. I know people, I, I literally watch people sell fruits in the trains. I watch people sell candy on the trains. I watch people sell peanuts on corners, sell corn, sell food. Because they have a different ideology. They don't got the criminal mindset. But as long as we keep making excuses and we keep having the, this pessimistic ideals as like, oh, e doing illegal things is the only way we can make money, then we ain't really going to get that far. It's only a matter of time for, the, for it catches up to us and we go down. It's only a matter of time. A few people escape through the cracks. But we got to change how we view the world. We got to change our attitude. Our philosophies first because they're going to change our thought pattern once we change our thought pattern our attitudes will change which means our behavior the way we look at the world the way we look at people the way we look at our communities will change and then we're going to get to the action so to the solutions is is this we got to figure out how to keep or buy the properties in our neighborhood so we can stop complaining we gotta we gotta figure it out when you have that mindset that positive mindset of I'm going to figure it out, right? This is the whole concept of think and grow rich. This is the whole concept of rich and poor dad. They have gotten us to the point where we think in poor. We think in pessimistic ways. We think we can't get it. We think we don't got no power. We think we can't do nothing. And this is why we stay in the same conditions that we think. So we got to change this, right? So figure out how to keep or buy properties. Figure out what's going for sale. Figure out how we going to get it. How we going to hook it up. How we going to rent it? How we going to do whatever? How we going to keep it? We got to figure that out. So we got to make the, the proactive, we got to take the proactive measures to figure that out. Another thing is, so which leads to the next point, the next solution is stay proactive. Fix your credit, right? Try to get some type of business credit if you could do that, um, right? If you, if you could create an LLC, if you got a business, if you got certain things, just keep educating yourself on the market, on the market value, on, 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 on real estate, on, on certain things, you just, but the information is out there, man. But it starts with you having the positive mindset of I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do this and I want to take care of my neighborhood and change your attitude about your neighborhood. Appreciate it. If you live in a building, why are you destroying it? Why are you peeing in it? Why are you spitting in it? Why are you vandalizing it? Why are you throwing shit in the staircase? Why are you doing certain shit? Come on. This is the things, this is how we got to be. When you, and when you see people do it, sometimes you got to be like, yo, come on, bro. We live here. Like, you know, I'm not saying get crazy with people. You don't got to be for nobody. But it's like we got to uphold each other. When you see somebody doing certain things, you got to be like, bro, come on, man. We live here. Like, why are we, why are we doing this to the building? You know what I'm saying? And you're going you're gonna to get certain responses from people. Stop being afraid of your people. Get what I'm saying? But we have to appreciate our people. We have to appreciate our neighborhoods. We have to appreciate the places that we live in. Today, I, I, I don't loiter where I live. I might lower it somewhere else, like in a white neighborhood or something. But that's wrong, too. You get what I'm saying? But I, I have a little more appreciation for my neighborhood and where I live, you know? So, like I said, you got to figure out how to keep or buy it. You got to stay proactive and fix your credit, go to the meetings, work, try to find people to work with. Um, and we also got to show appreciation for our neighborhoods and our communities and our people. And hopefully things will change. But it all starts with the mindset how we look at the world, and our attitudes about it. But let me know what y'all thoughts are in the comment section. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. Stay blessed. Peace.